Marking gauges are essential woodworking tools, not just reserved for woodworking's hand tool elite. They can be extremely beneficial in any woodworking shop, and if you bought one but you don't use it because it doesn't perform quite the way you expected it to, try this test. Place a piece of paper on a block of wood and try to slice it with the wheel, just by using the weight of the tool. If it does this, you're in business. And if it does this, your marking gauge is basically useless, and it's probably the main reason why you don't use it. Take the cutter off, take it over to your favorite sharpening system, and start rubbing the face around in small circles with light pressure. If you invested into the Scary Sharp system we talked about a while back, this will work perfectly for something like this. If you have a lot of sharpening to do, it's a good idea to rotate the wheel every once in a while so that you don't accidentally wear down one side more than the other. Check your progress by looking at the bottom of the wheel and examining the wear. They all look flat right out of the box, but a flat stone or plate will show you exactly where the high and low spots really are. Now, depending on the quality of steel and the quality of the manufacturing, this initial stage can take some time, but the payoff is literally the difference between using the tool and keeping it in a junk drawer. Once a burr develops all the way around on the beveled side, lightly file it off on the edge of the stone or plate, rotating the wheel as you go. Just be careful to only remove the burr and not create flat spots. Then you can work your way up through the higher grits. Like all cutting tools, really sharp is really good, but I personally don't know if the difference between 8,000 grit and 60,000 grit is going to have a huge payoff, but do as you like and then try the paper test again. Now the good news is you only have to do this once. After this, you can tune it up at pretty much any point by simply touching it up on a higher grit stone once in a while. Now that you're all sharpened up, let's put it to use. Press the marking gauge stock firmly against the edge that you're referencing from and pull it towards you, making a very light pass. Unless your hand is a part of your project and needs to be sliced into as well, keep it out of the way. Now make another light pass just a little bit deeper. The whole key to marking gauges is to focus pressing the stock against the edge, not pressing the wheel down into the material. That's why it's so important to keep these tools sharp so that they do the work for us. This is one of those things that becomes very personal to each person's style. Chisel lines can benefit from several passes, meaning a deeper cut, so that a small square knife wall is established. This is also beneficial for establishing a saw reference line too. Wheel type marking gauges can be used both against and with the grain once they're properly tuned, but some find going with the grain a little bit tricky. Instead of trying to mark the length of a board in one pass, try making multiple short passes at first. This will let the knife edge slice through the wood grain easily without giving it enough time to get caught in the tracks of the grain. And one last tip, if you have a mortise gauge, one that has an inside and an outside cutter, Use one cutter at a time. Trying to scribe lines with both at the same time will almost always cause you headaches.